I was having a conversation with these three women who were members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. And we got to talking about just dating and relationships in general. And then at one point they said, Ellen, can we pick your brain over something? I said, sure. And then one of them said, Ellen, why do men do this thing where they'll give you the misleading impression that they want a long-term relationship with you? But then if you have sex with them two times, three times, five times, 10 times, all of a sudden you just don't hear from them again. I said, oh, that's, that's easy. I said, these are guys who really deep down, they just wanted to engage in casual sex with you. But then they had the heart or courage to tell you that straightforwardly. So they basically misled you and, and manipulated you. And they were really frustrated by that. They said, well, why? I mean, why would they do it? How come, how come they won't be straightforward about Because, Ellen, I hope you know, women, we get into casual sex, too. And that was funny when she said that because that was at least partially surprising to me. Because way back at this point, this was the early 80s, I didn't think women were enthusiastic about engaging in casual sex. Unless they were just, you know, had a solidified reputation for being highly promiscuous. But other than that, I didn't think women really were down to engage in casual sex. But these three AKs, they let me know. They said, they basically went on to say, we have the same delineations that sh- of, of men that you guys have of women. For example, they said, you guys have certain women you look at as just, can, can I curse on your show? As PG? Yeah, yeah, go for it. No, go for it. She said, Be yourself. you guys have um, women you look at as just fuck buddy material. Am I correct? I said, yeah. And then you have other women that you look at as more long-term girlfriend, maybe even future wife material. Am I correct? I said, exactly. She said, well, see, us women, we have the same delineations. There's some guys, we look at them and say, oh, he's sexy. I wouldn't mind having a roll in the hay with him for a, a eight, two nights, three nights. But at the same time, they would be like, that guy, we, we would say to ourselves, we don't want him as a boyfriend or as a husband. But just as a satisfying lover for a few days or maybe a couple of weeks or so, sure. Then we have other guys that we look at as long-term boyfriend slash future husband material. So they went on again to make the argument that we don't understand why men go as far as to be dishonest, disingenuous, misleading, manipulative with us, because they never know. If they were straightforward with us, they have no idea that many of us would reciprocate their sexual desires and interests. And of course, that made me reference, talk dirty to me, the sequel, I saw the sequel, Talk Dirty to Me Part 2. So, yeah, in that conversation, I started thinking about those two, what I had learned from those two movies. So then the next thing that happened, I, I went back to my fraternity house. I'm a member of Cap Alpha Psi fraternity. And I kind of did an informal survey of some of my fraternity brothers. I would ask them, i say, fellas, when you meet a woman that you know you pretty much just want casual sex with, you have no real desire to be in a long-term relationship with these women. Are you straightforward about that with them? Or do you like, you know, make attempts to mislead them and manipulate them? And they all were like, come on, Ellen. You can't be straightforward with You can't just go up to a woman and be like, hey, Tanya, I have no interest in being your boyfriend. I just want to fuck you for the next two weeks. You down? They were like, no, (laughs) you're going to get slapped. You're going to get cursed out. You're going to have drinks on you. You can't do that. And I was like, why can't you? And they, they treated me like I was just goofy. They were like, Ellen, what have you been drinking, dude? You, you can, <laughs> I swear to God, you should not go up to a woman and straightforwardly let her know in the very first conversation, all you want from her is just a few episodes of casual sex. And I, I kept saying, I begged the difference. So they said, okay, next party we have, Show me. Let's see this, this straightforward style you got that you, you, you claim will work and be effective. We want to see this because we're going to be standing a few feet away laughing at you. And long story short, I proved them all wrong. 
And I'm all like, whoa. They started nicknaming it the Jedi Mind Trick. They said, oh, man. Alan, they would tell other friends, but they say, hey, man, Alan got this Jedi Mind Trick, man, where he goes up to women and he says really, like, bold, straightforward, sexually explicit stuff to them. And at first they have somewhat of a negative reaction. But then he uses his personality to just charm them. And next thing you know, they're like smiling and giggling and giving him their phone number. Man, this dude is on to something. So can you can you just walk us through like what they would have seen at one of those parties when you were first iterating the, uh, the uh, you didn't have a name for it at the time probably, but yeah, when you were first iterating this this concept? Yeah, what I, a couple of examples like say at the, at the cabin party was I went up to a woman, I went up to a, one, one of the women uh, approached mm-hmm. that night. And I said, you looking good in that outfit. And she said, thank you. I said, you know what? We need to get together sometime next um, week or two. And she said, why? I said, because I want to fuck you. And she went, why? Excuse me. And I said, you're excused. She said, I don't believe you just said that. I said, yes, you do. You believe I said it. I said, you're a sexy woman. I can tell by the way you look at me that you're attracted to me. We need to get together and fuck. No attachments, no monogamous commitments, just straight up fuck. And the woman was like, wow, wow, wow. I never knew you were like this. I thought you were so much more of like a gentleman. I I never knew you you talked to women like this. I said, we all got different sides to our personality. I said, so... Are you telling me you're not interested? If you're not interested, I'll walk away and leave you alone. And see, I do that with a lot of women. I call that my my followers know. I call this, I dare you to reject me. And so, mm. you know, I always actually see a lot of men, and we can get into that a little later, but a lot of men, because of the advice of conventional PUAs, they try to always prevent and avoid rejection. Whereas mm. I would run up to it head on. I would always say something to the effect of when I would converse with a woman, I would always say something to the effect of, are you not interested? Because if you are, I'll end the conversation right now. And that's what I did to one of the women at that Kappa party. I said, if you're not interested, I'll leave you alone right now. And she didn't end the conversation. She just kind of looked at me and she said, so you want to fuck me? I said, I very much want to fuck you. And I moved in closer and I started talking in her left ear. I said, I want to fuck the shit out of you. And I just started saying a whole bunch of X-rated dirty talk. And to my pleasant surprise, she started getting turned on. She was like, oh, oh, this is hot. This is hot. She said, you going to come over tomorrow? I said, yeah, I'll come over. So some of my friend brothers were observing this from like, I don't know, three, four feet away. And they saw her change. They saw how she initially looked like she, you know, she was having a, giving me a negative reaction. Then the next thing, they saw her smiling and giving me her number. And they were like, like, wow. And then I had a similar conversation with at least, I want to say at least two more women at that same party. That same thing happened. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the other two women, they did essentially the same thing. I approached them. I first usually would give them a compliment like, man, what's up, Linda? You enjoying yourself at the party? And then Linda would say, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, Linda, you know, you got one of the nicest, roundest, juiciest looking asses on this entire campus. You probably hear that a lot. And then Linda was like, oh, Alan, you're so bad. You're so naughty. I can't believe you just said that. I said, oh, I said that because I want to fuck you. And then Linda was like, what? <laughs> Did you just do? I said, yes, I said it. So you just thought, you, you're not going to apologize for saying that? I said, why should I apologize for telling you the truth? You got a big, round, juicy ass. I want to fuck the shit out of you. Doggy style, preferably. And Linda was like, oh my God, Alan, you need to stop. You need to stop. And again, what did I do? I said, okay, Linda. Look me dead in my eyes and tell me you don't want me to fuck you. If you look me dead in my eyes and tell me you want you don't want me to fuck you, uh, in this conversation right now and go about my way. And Linda 
then in the conversation. She said, well, you know, I do find you handsome, Alan. Then I leaned close. I said, tell me that again. She said, I do find you handsome. And then I had this habit of saying, say it again, which is actually the title of one of my books. I said, say it again. She said, I think you're handsome. And I said, tell me that you want me to fuck you. And at first she said, Ellen, I can't. I don't know. I can't say that. I don't know. I said, you can say it. Say, say, Ellen, I want you to fuck me. And she said, Ellen, I want you to fuck me. I said, say it again. She said, Ellen, I want you to fuck me. And then we, and so again, I had some frat brothers watching that. And they was just like, how the, so the next thing that happened, that was during uh, the 84, 85 academic year at IU. Then that following year, my, bro- my older brother, Stephen, he was at a satellite campus of IU in Gary called Indiana University Northwest, Gary, Indiana. And he transferred down to the Bloomington campus. And so when he came down, a lot of my front brothers when they ran into him, they would say, oh, so you Ellen's br- brother, Steven. And he'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, oh, man, your brother, he a trip, man. And Steven would be like, what are you talking about? They'd be like, man, your brother, Ellen, man, he is by far the most verbally bold, straightforwardly honest dude when he comes to talking to women, probably on the entire campus of any university, man. I mean, this dude, he never misses words. As expected, my brother also referenced the Talk Dirty. He knew I'd watch those movies. So he said, hey, man, I'm hearing you using that Talk Dirty stuff in real life. And I said, yep. And he said, and according to your front brothers, it's working for you. I said, yep. And he was like, get out of here. I don't believe that. So you actually like just going up to women in like in the first two or three minutes of conversation. You let women know you, you want to casually fuck them. I said, yep. And he was basically like skeptical. He's like, get out of here. But then he ended up, we ended up going to a grocery store one night in June of 1986. I still remember ladies yesterday. And you know, I'll skip over Miss Lane's details. In a nutshell, I was mole one with a woman. She ended up performing oral sex on me. He was an eyewitness to it because we were in her car and he was like, two spaces away in his car and he could see her head bobbing up and down. And that was the night, that was a game changer definitely for my brother because that's when he first suggested that I put it on paper. He said, bro, bro, bro. I remember he just kept that bro over again. He said, bro, bro. If you get results like this from this talk dirty method, you know, he said, oh man, you put this on paper. You got to put this on paper, man. This is like phenomenal, man. And I kind of was playing it down. I was like, I don't, I don't know about putting it on paper. He's like, no, seriously, man. I think you can help some guys, particularly guys that are maybe shy and introverted and just don't have the same level of courage that you do. He said, man, I think you can help guys like that, man. I mean, that's like amazing that that works in real life. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here and I'll see you over there.